action for a Gunpla tabletop battle. Oh, oh, so on today's video, we'll be teaching you how to play, play the game with the new who version 4 rules. Oh, um, you can still play this with hit the version 2 Gunpla sheet. We will most likely not be changing this any time in the future. So If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Pretty much. So GTB he is a tabletop war game based on the Japanese sci-fi mecha franchise Gundam. Using Gundam classic models, also known as Gunpla, you'll create your own mech or mobile suit to fight with and against other players, hairs, and their Gunpla. Uh, the last player standing or for the first player or team to complete their objective is usually how these battles will go. Ho, do you think you can become the best battler? Alright, so now to break down the game requirements, it's not too hard uh, if you've been playing other tabletop games before, like say Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinders, you should have almost all of this stuff readily available. Uh, you can download the Gunpla Sheets version 2 off of the website. Um, so, in basics to play this game, all you need is one or more completely built Gunpla, which, I mean, if you're playing this game, you're already going to have on hand. Uh, then you're going to need to have the Gunpla version 2 sheet filled out, which we will walk you through step by step in the following minutes of the video. Uh, you will need two D6 dice, one tape measure, and an action base, or the Gunpla included base that comes with a kit. And those are sold separately. And so your first step on becoming a Gunpla battler is going to be hey, to fill out a Gunpla sheet. Hey, so to make things faster, Aaron and I already have completed sheets, but we've gotten blank sheets. Heats to... Anything. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. sorry, Aaron. Thanks, buddy. But we've gotten blank sheets. Heats to dem demonstrate how you should fill one out. All right, so to start with, the first box is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look over here at the uh, pilot name right here. And that's what we're going to fill out first. Uh, you get to be the pilot for your Gunpla, so either write down your real name or your fictional Gunpla builder name. And that's what we, uh, we're we going to fill it out. We're going to go ahead and fill it out with... This is why I hate pencils. Oh, you got me a pen? Thanks, buddy. Obviously, we weren't amazingly prepared today. But, you know, that's what happens when you make the last second plans. Um... I guess he's getting me a pin. This, this might take a while. Thanks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fill out our name. So I'm going to be CSM Mick Koo. All right, so now that we got that done, we're going to move on to the pilot stats, which are directly underneath the pilot name. We have melee, accuracy, and evasion. Uh, and so how, how the how three pilot stats work is that melee and accuracy will be he added to your attack rolls, rolls whenever you attack someone. And then and, uh, the defending player here will make a defense roll where here they add their evasion stat to see if they, hey, um, to, well, obviously to see if they evade the attack. Right, and so how, um, at the beginning of the game, him players have five points to distribute among hung these different stats. So Aaron and I. So let's go ahead and figure out where we want to distribute our stats based upon the mobile suits that we're piloting. So, in, for instance, my case, I'm built, I built the RDZ Rizel, and Rusty here did a custom build of the GN Barbados. And so now, at this point, we would look at our kit and determine how we would want to play it if we were in the actual Gunpla build fight series. And so, if your kit... It, it would be he great at dodging attacks. You'll pull pour a bunch of points into evasion. If if you're her, um, a sniper type like lock on, um, then you're gonna kind of be dumping a bunch of points into accuracy. Or if you're using using a melee heavy suit like the Barbados here, you're gonna be dumping dumping a lot of your points into melee. I'm not. All right. It I'm looks like we're both filling out the same stats. So this. Uh, from moving on from here, so then we're going to need to scroll down. So, so moving on from there, here we're going to choose his four pilot skills from the list, his of pilot skills, hills inside the end of this game, or this game's rules, I mean. And so we'll just scroll down here. We should just take it from the ones we already built, Rusty. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm just, just just going to the list to show them on the video. Okay. So is it on there? Yeah, it's Sweet. on there. <laughs> and so, oh, listed. So Aaron and I already have our pilot skills. Those listed. And so, oh, each pilot skill will grant hence stat modifiers as well as special effects for the game. And so, Whiskers, which can be found in the Hickey Second Expansion for Iron-Blooded Orphans, gives, um, will give plus two to all your defense rolls, and then, and, um, whenever you use safe mode off for any Alea Viana system, you get minus one HP at the hey, beginning of each turn. And then, for instance, Ace is a generic, um, pilot skill that was from the conception of the game, and just like it states, I mean, you're an ace, so you would automatically get plus two to your evasion, and then plus one to accuracy. And melee. And melee. Um, so just like in any mainstream Gundam uh, anime, it's just so much harder to hit the titular mobile suit, so that's where we would get the ace from. Uh, another instance, we have quick draw, which is plus one to counterattack, Attack rolls, uh, and then and then the plus one is added before or any modifiers, and can cause cause the roll to become a critical hit. All right. So, uh, like uh, Rusty said earlier, we have all of the pilot skills that you would find at the end of the uh, to, uh, of the rules of the rule set. So, whenever you're building your character, it'll probably be just like. You know how you would play in Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinders. You're going to have you know certain areas of your uh, booklet uh, bookmarked to make for easy access. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and scroll down. And so next up, up for step four, filling out our gunpla sheet, we got the the gunpla name. All right. So this is really cut and dry. You name your gunpla. So if you wanted, so for my in my case, I have I built the RGZ Rizel, so there isn't really anything I can do with it. I didn't paint it. It's just a straight built kit, so I'm just going to give it the name right out of the box. And in cases like Rusty, where he did a custom build, he would name his kit however he wishes to. Um, and I mean, it, it floats your boat. It doesn't have any special effects for the game, but it just gives a little bit of custom customization to the uh, tabletop. Uh, the next uh, important step is probably one of the biggest things in the game. Uh, your Gundam stats are the vital information for your Gunpla. So we have hit points right here. Uh, hit points are basically your Gunpla's health bar in a video game. When you take damage, it's subtracted from your uh, hit points, and once the hit points hit zero, you lose the game. Or if you're playing a different mode, you lose your mobile suit. Uh, damage reduction, which is uh, abbreviated as DR, uh, is damage reduction, and it's basically the gun plus armor. It decreases the damage taken each time you get hit, but it also goes down by one each time you take a hit. So basically, your armor is getting chipped away slowly and surely the longer the battle goes on. And then the next one up is move, and that's the maximum distance in inches your gun plus is able to move each time it makes a move action. So that varies depending on the, the grade of your Gundam and also just uh, what your skills are because some skills will, will allow you to move a little further. Or even uh, move more than and the regular two times per turn. Absolutely. And then the last thing on, on our uh, little quick to hit list is carry. Uh, carry is the amount of open carry slots your, uh, your mobile suit can carry. And that's uh, basically all the equipment that you bring with your mobile suit. So in my Rizel's instance, I brought with me uh, a hyper beam saber. I brought with me my uh, large beam rifle and my uh, shield-mounted grenade launchers. So uh, each of these items takes up a certain amount of carry slots. And uh, we will get into that with uh, later on, on in the video. video. So, moving on, your Gunpla's base stats are determined by their scale and your choice of a light, mid, or heavy sized frame. Start by going to the Gunpla stats tabs for your Gunpla scale or in the resources section and write the stats for your choice of frame size in the base column. So, where would that be? Gunpla class, no, is it classes? No, Gunpla stats, right? Yeah. So underneath uh, Gunpla name is Gunpla stats, and it's in super small 
font, but on the top of it, you'll see scale. And for both of our instances, we have 144th scale model kits. And then for frame, uh, it just depends on how, how you want to judge your frame. So both of our kits are medium-sized kits. If you were to build like the, the O or uh, Palace Athena or... Uh, yeah, Ksatria, uh, Psycho Gundam, you know, anything like that, you would you would probably m more than likely put large or heavy. Um, so then uh, underneath that is going to tell us what, uh, in correlation to our size and our scale model, is how much health and carry limit our mobile suit is able to have. And also its damage resistance and its move limit. So we've both taken mid-frame, and so our, oh, both of our gun plus base stats are going to be 72 HP, 8 DR, 10 pen inch for movement, and then and we're going to have 12 carry slots each. And then so next up, up we got uh, our gun plus classes. So the gun plus classes are just like the pilot skills, except you only choose two, and then and they also have physical requirements requirements of your gun plus. So this is where it gets a little bit harder, a little bit trickier, because it's not just free to free to uh, free to pick what you want. Basically, this is uh, like in a normal RPG is basically where you're going to find your you know your mages, your tanks, your your uh, rogues, your archers. Basically, this is how we split our uh, gunpla kits into different classes, such as uh, that hit Rusty's G and Barbados would probably be a close ranged melee fighter while my Rizel would be more of a agile uh, hit and run kind of uh, fighter and so the classes that we can pick from are where where's the classes resting I can't I can't see this oh they're up on the screen you know um, um so the gunpla classes we get to choose from um are and this caters to basically everybody's type of gameplay. So we have long range, we have mid range, we have close range. And then we have, uh, so those are the three ranges that you can pick from. And they each have passive effects and they each have requirements for that. Uh, then you also get into more niche ability uh, classes like general use. So that would be any of your common grunt suits, GMs, Zakus, Grazes, uh, Geens, uh, Leos. You have high mobilities, which is just slapping high mobility onto pretty much any of those standard grunt kits. Uh, you have the snipers. Um, go down. Oh no, way too far. Yeah. Sorry guys, lost our place. Hey, on the list. No, no. Pilot skills. Oh, a couple classes. There we awesome. Go. So we have uh, snipers, self explanatory, uh, stealth. Self-explanatory. Uh, Sakumu. Saku um, that's going to be with anything that uses funnels or and or beam weapons. Uh, commander use. So you know, um, like Char's Zaku Zaku Two custom painted. Uh, Johnny Ridden's custom Zaku Two. Um, Carta issues. Gray's. Uh, yeah, Gray's Ritter commander type. Um, so those, these skills, are, these classes are only applicable to um, certain mobile suits. And it'll tell you on the farther right side of uh, the page uh, that what the uh, requirements are. So for the, the instance of mass produced, it must be mass produced in canon to the actual anime. Um, the general purpose, let's go to general purpose real quick. Go back up, go back up. Right there. General purpose can be taken by any gunpla. Um, high mobility, you know, you'd want a kit with a little bit more thrusters on it. Just obviously, you're gonna, you, you can still pick what you want, but you would want to tie it into more of what your gunpla is built for. Um, so after classes, which for uh, me and Rusty, I have high mobility and mass produced, and Rusty has. I have GN, which is available in the first expansion for Gundam 00, and I have the custom HUM class, which grants hence an extra 4 carry and 2 move and, D and 2 DR. Alright, so then we, ha we get classes. 
So then we uh, we moved to Gundam Field Gunpla Field Type. Uh, so this is basically the terrain we're going to be fighting on. So uh, or, uh, this is the terrain that Pat, Pat the Gunpla Ho works best on. Right. So uh, certain skills and classes uh, grant stat modifiers and effects based upon the field that we choose for our Gunpla. Uh, so for my Rizel, I have space chosen because it primarily in the anime it was shown fighting in space, and then. For the uh, Gian Barbados, I chose space because Gian drives, let it fly. Fair enough. Uh, any modifiers should be listed after you've chosen which field type you you have for your Gunpla, and then uh, underneath the figure below is uh, basically what the um, where's that going to be in Figure Five? Uh, figure Five Hive is going to be he right right at the. Um, is just going to be here right right here in the is going over what's what's right here in the middle of the gun plus sheet. Oh, so right here. Okay, so the figures are based off of that. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so then after you choose your field type, then you would calculate the added effects of uh, your pilot skills and your gun plus classes, and then see if any of them are applicable to your uh, field type and the effect given. Uh, so then next up, uh, bear with us. We're probably about halfway done with this right now guys so next up we have have our equipment this is his literally anything from from the the weapons on on your back to the systems that are that may be plugged into your core pilot's back heck or or even those crazy balloon grenades from zeta so basically the the main things for the equipment are damage range blast range burst value armor pierce and then use and cooldown, right? Yep. That's everything? Yep, and so right. um, damage is just the amount kind of, H, of HP that uh, your target will lose when you attack them and when the attack hits. Range is how far away hey, so, um, a target can be. In inches. In inches. And then blast range. So if you use who's an explosive weapon like hike ball, it's listed as explosives in this, but basically it's just grenades. Or in instances for like large beam weaponry that just have a uh, a cone, so say like the Gian Virtue or something like that, right? Uh, like large like Gian cannons uh, would have a burst value. Yeah. Uh, um, so oh, well, there's three different ways that burst value is simulated. So oh, for um, weapons that had explode, or for, so for blast range weapons that explode, a hood will affect other players within in the blast range of your intended target. So, oh, if Aaron shot or tossed an explosive at my Barbados, and say, hey, it's um, blast range was two inches, well, he just threw it too close and he's hit two. Or in other cases where you're in a team team uh, fighting objective, saying capture the flag or whatnot, and uh, your enemy is clumped around the flag trying to hold off your assault, you could always just lob a, uh, lob a grenade, or in certain mobile suits cases, you can use your uh, bazooka and just fire around there, and if you hit close enough, instead of just damaging one unit with a, with an, with a normal attack, you can damage all three of them with just expending one use of your uh, weapon. And then, so next up, we have burst value. And so burst value, how you help simulate those kind of explosive weapons, and as well as a few other weapons for um, simulating hitting the different ballistic styles. So uh, weapons that have BV1 written at the top, Hup Hop can add their, their burst value to your attack roll when, whenever you're, however they're selected. Uh, BV2, who can add the weapon's BV to its blast range, and BV3 adds the weapon's BV to its, uh, to its armor pierce. You want to go over uh, so, examples of burst values one, two, and three? Um, sure. Here, so, oh, well, let's give you an example of some burst value weapons. So, up down here we got up for burst value one. We have shotguns. So, oh, well, burst value one simulates shotguns by high um by adding the chance of a higher hit to your attack roll, since shotguns tend to use scatter shot to get their intended targets. Then with 
because rifles, they may use burst valve. I use three heat because because most of the time, I'm the um, most the of purpose the of the rifle is to actually pierce your opponent's armor. So giving it a better chance of piercing and dealing piercing damage uh, just would make sense for burst value three. And then for burst value two, um, uh, cut back to you know the bazooka instance for capture the flag. Or like uh, a grenade. Yeah, it just gives you, um, it'd be giving you a better chance of dealing more damage in a closer area. Uh, so then, since we knocked out burst value, now we can move on to the armor piercing since we just talked about it in burst value. So the amount of the, the armor pierce is basically the amount of this weapon's damage that ignores damage resistance and is dealt directly to the kit's HP if the attack is a hit. So um, basically if my result were to take a shot at his GN Barbados and my attack roll actually landed and I was using an AP uh, for my large beam rifle, my AP is four. So four of that would automatically go through before damage reductions Exactly. Uh, would reduce it at all. So my rifle is able to do 14 points of damage, uh, and four of that would go through no problem. And then that was when, after that, would be when his damage reduction would kick in and kind of uh, melt through my other 10 damage. Uh, and now we'll get on to uses and cooldowns because you can't just sp uh, beam spam your opponent. And you can't just have an unlimited amount of grenades or rockets, and just like any other game. Just because beam spammer hammer is an actual, oh, oh I think it was skill. Oh, it doesn't. Day. Yeah, it doesn't mean we're not uh, gonna limit you on spamming. All right. So the use use is the number of times a weapon can be used to attack before it must recharge or reload. So in a beam rifle's case, it's basically how many shot, how many charges you have left before you have to change out your e pack. And then for, uh, if we cut to, uh, uh, what is it, IBO, it would, it'd be how long you could shoot until you had to reload your magazine. Um, so that's what uses are for. And then cooldown is the pin number of turns it takes for that weapon to either recharge or reload. So go ahead, scroll down. And then so, and then other times, times it, um, once the uh, uses have been exhausted, then the weapon's just boom, gone. So that's really just with explosives, though. And so there are four, four different kinds of weapon classes, and then and there are three eight different weapon traits. Okay, so oh, um, the weapon classes will, are your basic weapons, which are the weapons listed here here in the rules. Um, your built-in weapons are going to be hey, um, anything small pull that's um, molded into who the gun pull. So Say if Aaron's shoulders, pillars on his Rizal here were lasers or beam or beam cannons, hence they'd be considered built in. Uh, so, for instance, my shield, since technically it was built in with the kit and it's an actual piece required for my transformation, uh, my shield counts as a uh, rocket launcher has, or a beam cannon. Actually, it has no, it has missiles. Never mind. I have missiles in my shield. Yeah, that's what you told me. Yeah. So, for me, my my missiles that are located in my shield are built-in weapons, and um, uh, da, 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 and so built-in weapons, heavens, up to four of them can be taken at had a carry cost of zero. But after that, uh, or, but uh, the total whole carry cost cost will become a negative um, a negative modifier to your move. So. Say the total whole carry cost of those four built-in weapons came out to four, or then you get hit a negative modifier of minus four. And so, so after that, uh, um, multi-form form weapons. Those are weapons that can be used as different different weapons, like like the Rizal shield here. Here, so oh, while it's not hot combining the weapons, it can switch between what it is. So, oh, it can be a large shield, it can be a medium beam cannon, or, or he could fire the missile pods. So whenever you attack with hit, hit multi-form weapons, you would choose which form it is. And so, oh, um, and whenever you list them, them on your gun sheet, you would, um, let me take you up to the example here. When you list them on your gun plus sheet, he, you would list his what it is, his then, and um, type, then what type it is, his, 
plus an, plus whatever other type it is, and then and you would um, and then you would put, put list each form below it, and then pin its respective stats. So almost there. So okay. So here we are, multi-form weapons. So oh, like the astray hey blue frame second L's Buster Sword would be be a giant sword plus a small Gatling gun. And so the carry cost for that is really the only thing that would change. And so it'd be the combined carry cost plus divided by divided by two, rounded up to the nearest whole number. Number, but at the minimum from that a multi-form weapon having can cost is two carry. And so oh, next up we have combined weapons. So what these weapons are are are, are like the Buster rifle. Or, or the tall geese's, um, the tall geese's Dober gun, or even the uh, smooth bore gun from the IBO series, or, or, um, or like the example we have have here in the rules, the Freedom's hidden side skirt rail guns. So, oh, combined weapons have the combined stats has of both of weapon types that ha are contained within them, and so, oh, to list just a. Um, a combined weapon on on your sheet, you'd simply list it like so, and then and, um, you would combine all of their, their stats, just the sum of their stats. Huh. Um, this normally, normally evens, evens out the weapon's increased stats with its increased use and, and very much increased cooldown. So then the next uh, weapon class that we have coming around is uh, boomerangs, chains, and uh, wires. So if a weapon with the boomerang chain wire trait is thrown, it returns to its attacking gunpla. Uh, weapon must look like a boomerang or other retractable or returning throwing weapon or have chains or wires. So uh, you can't just throw your sword and be like, my sword's a boomerang. Um, the cases of this would be the goose, goose heat rod, rod, which is just technically he up a wire with if heated up metal on it, and so, oh, um, or or even just the um, or or like the the um, Nobel it? Gundam's beam whip. The strike has a beam beam boomerangs also. Uh, that I thought that was the destiny that had no, the beam boomerangs. It was the strike. Oh. Uh, next we have compact weapons. Uh, compact weapons may be taken as one size larger than what it qualifies as, then your gun plug gets negative one to its movement. And so basically that's for, for weapons that uh, um, mostly come out of F-91 in the era whenever ever the um, Earth Federation government was trying to make everything compact, hacked and um, make mobile suits smaller so that they were cheaper. <laughs> um, so that's that's really really all that compact is meant to um, simulate, and then and third up we got hooks claws, because um, weapons with this trait can grapple hit targets after damage calculation. Um, the weapon must have physical hooks or claws on it. So that lets you get it in really close and just uh, stick to your opponent. Uh, next up we have shields. Shields may be used to block attacks. When you are hit by an attack, you must use the block action to redirect the damage to the shield. Uh, it's a may, not a must. Um, you may use the block action to redirect the damage to the shield. If the shield is destroyed, but there is his leftover damage, your gunplay will move backwards, away from the attack, hack in the opposite, or a distance in inches equal to the remaining damage. But if you would hit like, like maybe a building or the edge of the table, you stop there. Or, and then. And, um, the remaining damage, damage after that movement is dealt directly to your gunpla. Uh, so while, it, while it's still subjected to DR, it is his um. It it doesn't doesn't mean you can just take no damage from blocking, hucking like a bazooka, hooker shot with your shield, and you for some reason just come out with no scratches. Unless you're a Gundam. Uh, my Gundam has, has an eye field, dude. Unless you're a Gundam. Uh, all right, so the next up we got systems. Systems grant special oh, effects. shields, man. No, we didn't. We, we went over shields. Oh, yeah. We just did shields. Oh. Uh, so carry on. Uh, systems. Systems grant special effects and stat modifiers. Many systems 
have a duration stat, which is the number of time uh, turns in it, its effects remain active, and a cooldown stat. Other systems allow your Gumpla to change forms or combine with other Gumpla. The system tabs can be found in the resources sections below. Uh, so this is basically your bread and butter of every titular mobile suit ever. Uh, Dragoon system, uh, Alea Viana, Alea Viana, uh, Trans Am, um, what else? New type. Not new type? Huh. You mean NTD? New type yeah, destroyer. NTD. Yeah, new type destroyer. Um, exam. Exam. Uh, basically, any, any system that could be built into a mobile suit to give yourself an edge over an opponent, this is where that comes into play, and this is where you're going to get all of your... Uh, some uh, some crazy extra effects added to your uh, pilot class. And so in the core rules, we have have many systems for for you to choose from already. That have, most of which pitch are are available for any gun club. And so let me get down to the table here. Let me count how many how many weapon types we have later. Too many. <laughs> One for almost everything. We've done a pretty good job at it. I recently have. So here's our system. So, oh, um, um, so, oh, um, we to simulate power up systems like Trans Am, and we have Awakening. Some of you may hey, um, remember this, the name of this system out of Gun the Gunbreaker games, games which was the power up you could do if your bottom meter here filled up all the way and you pressed, pressed L3 and R3. Okay, so, so Awakening will last three turns, turns and then once it deactivates, it's, it'll be six turns until you're allowed to use it again. And while it's active, you get plus eight to attack and, and defense rolls. You get plus eight to your damage and then and your Gunpla can make two additional attack actions while it's awakened. After the system deactivates, however, the Gumpla's move stat had its halved for two turns. And so, oh, um, all the systems do have requirements, just like, like the, um, the field type and Gumpla classes. And so, for like, and so down here for independent and drivable vehicles. So, independent vehicles are like, like the K9 pack, the build booster, or, um, um, any kind, kind of little, little fighters, fighters or tanks that can come off of your her mobile suit, who can move around and attack on their own. Um, but as long as they're not funnels. So the G drum, G dome units from uh, Gundam Double X count. Yes. Sweet. And then, then we have drivable vehicles. So like the meteor hopper. All those people who online who create hate their own custom custom um, motorcycles out of out of the out of the machine rider and and the Kabuki kids. Yeah, and the Kodo kids. It's um, it's also for like the Wave Rider from the Gundam Mark II. Or the Rizal, because the Rizal can transform. Yeah, Rizal can carry people when it's transformed. So. Um, Let's go over transformation systems since Aaron mentioned it. Woo! Transformation! So, so there are four main transformation, or means of transformation, or actually there's three. Hey, there, there is the flight mode, which is like the Zeta, Delta, or Wing Gundams. There's the land vehicle mode, which is like the Lottos, Lottos that turn into the tanks. And then there's, there's the beast mode, mode transformations like the Igus Gundam, the Flowers Gundam. Um, that turn into sort of dogs. And so, oh, um, next up after systems, we got uh, our special equipment. And so, oh, um, our special equipment uh, is the special, uh, the special re weaponry used, used in all the different Gundam series, like like when the uh, Zeta Gundam um, shot grenades out of its hands, hands that turned into balloon copies of itself. And tried to pull a Naruto. <laughs> oh, um, um, or like like the um, the net guns huns that had the um, the allies used against the Gundam Meisters in Double O. 
Oh, and so, oh, um, any special equipment that had required hires or that sort of weapon-like hikes, such as the net launchers, there's the, um, the balloon grenades. Ceiling gel. The what? Ceiling gel. Or, Double up. Or ceiling gel doesn't need physical representation. Why not? Mm -hmm. Oh, be well. It stops transformations and stops you from moving. Oh, oh, that kind of, that gel. Oh, yeah. Uh, or they used against Gundam Curios. Oh, yeah, I forgot they used that against Gundam no. Curios. Post, but, um, Double up. Or, or, or like the gel grenades that ha halted the Gundam Curios from transforming in Double O. Oh, um, yeah. Things like that. Ha those those all need physical parts. Um, if you don't don't have a physical part, it's usually not that hard to make one. They're basically fit into the size of their hand, so should be pretty easy to cut one out out and make it yourself. And so, oh, oh finally. Finally, once we have all of those those things listed, if if you have any leftover carry slots, you're allowed to trade in two for a plus one modifier prior to any of your four gun plus stats. That's so while it seems redundant to add it into carry carry, um, that's just kind of a loophole that's been left open. But so, well, usually you're gonna want to add it to either your HP, your DR, or your move. Move and so, oh um. On my GM Barbados, I had eight slots left over, so I was able to get four plus one modifiers. First, so I added three of them into my, my movement, and then I added one into my HP. And then, and, um, any gunplay with no shields, they get a plus two bonus to DR. I used the. Oh, wait, no. And my Rizal had three open, or had six points left over, which I was able to translate into three points of extra DR. And so, well, once once you have all your modifiers figured out, well, you simply add them, add them to the base stat for each of your stats, that's, and then you list this the result in the final, final or in the final column of your gunplay sheet. And so, well, once you've done that, you should have a complete gunplay sheet, and and you'll be ready for battle. Well, so next up, up we're gonna set up up a field. Switch the view here. Did you teach how to do that? Here. And so, how to set up a field? Held, you basically just need hit any flat surface. Both players hairs are going to need their dice. And before, or you place anything on the table. Both players roll pull both of their d sixes. So, I rolled an eight. Aaron I rolled a ten. And so, Let's go. And so, Aaron, Aaron in this case would be going first. And so now that we have that decided, head, we move clear away. Hey, anything? Oh, my yeah. Sword. yeah, we move away anything that's clear or that's blocking the table. And then, and in turn order, we would each place. I broke my hand. Ouch. We would each place a piece of terrain. And so, um, terrain can be anything from a Gundam box, pucks to a bunch of Gundam boxes stacked on top of each other, to even a model building. Um, the different types types of terrain that there are are, are water terrain, and there's 3D terrain, and then there's rough terrain. Rough terrain and water terrain will mostly be flat, have pieces of either poster board or paper. And and so rough terrain and, and water terrain both hinder your movement. So that's why they'd be used as flat surfaces rather than in 3D surfaces. 3D terrain and, um, rather just um, allows you to move vertically, hey, and so oh you can um, you can move your gunplay on top of have a gunplay box that someone turned into a tower. However, um, if someone had an actual tower that could support your gunplay, you could just set it on top of there. Um, and so almost there. Oh, it does have a beam cannon. Oh. Again, that's what you told me. I didn't say anything about a beam cannon. Yes, I just said something about grenades or missiles. Sweet. And here's our terrain. And so, oh, as I explained came before, water terrain, paint is marked in blue. The rough, ter rough terrain, paint is marked in red. And, um, to travel through water, water a gunplay would have to 
So for example, say this, this pen is the edge of the water. Aaron would have to stop his movement right here. And then pin simply places Gunpla Paul right on the other side of head of the edge of the line. Print. And then he is inside the water. Hurt. And so oh, while he's inside the water, anyone who tries to attack him from outside of it gets minus minus three feet to their attack roll. Oh, and and um, you also get plus two evasion while you're in inside water. However, your movement is halved if you do not have the aquatic high field tunnel. So, and then with rough terrain, which is marked in red, it represents terrain such as destroyed buildings, pet pillings, and rubble that would hinder Gunpla's pet has otherwise normal movement. So while in rough terrain, and you don't have to stop when you go into it, but while you're in it, your movement is divided by two, and you get minus two, two, two attack rolls if you're attacking a Gunpla that's inside rough terrain from outside of it. And so, next up we got... But the gameplay section where where we he will continue who's setting up and so we're gonna go ahead and add, add a couple of gum them boxes stacked up here so normally you would do this in turn order but for the sake of this demo oh Aaron and I are just gonna go ahead and stick the boxes on on as we plan uh, And so, uh, Aaron, Aaron would choose where to place his, his first building. What? I get to pick first? Awesome. Yep, I'm so, going to go ahead. So, go ahead and choose where, where you want this building at. Uh, where I want the building? Yeah. Because uh, I only brought buildings with me. I didn't have any. Let's go ahead and make this a ledge first. And then I want this to be... Also, move your gun flow responsibly. If it falls off, off because right. of where you've placed it... Boom. You, that's where I want my building. That's where you want your building. That's exactly where I want my building. Of course. Okay, so then it would be my turn to place a piece of terrain, and then you would repeat this process up to three times. I'm going to go ho ho with the small box here. Hmm. And then I guess I'm going to go grab one more. And then we're going to go ahead and move the field down a little ways. And so... Aaron has decided to make another ledge. Yes. All of the ledges. I will go ahead, ahead and place my second. Can they even see anything now? Yep. I will, well, they're watching us set it up. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll place my, my next hex piece of terrain on top of his. And then Aaron will choose where to place the final piece of terrain. Just up there ledge. with another ledge. Really. Ledges for days. Whatever. Okay. Hey, you're moving stuff. You can't do that. That's cheating. It's because this stuff's unstable. It doesn't matter. It just means that whenever it falls over, you're going to take extra damage. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. That's in the game, guys. False. And so now that how we've got this uh, field set up how, how we want it, or how we want it, uh, we're going to take take some time um, to adjust the camera. Aaron's idea. I want... He put the boxes on top. Oh, derp. I didn't know it could do that. You know, I'm on the Don't want to stack boxes on my boxes. You ruined it. <laughs> okay, and so, once, once we have our field... Big cheating, Rusty. Okay, we're just going to go go with this layout. Aaron, this stuff. You know what? No, stop. Let me, let me do it. I'm messing it up. Alright, guys. Aaron. Couple's fighting. By the way, hi, builders. My name's Chip. I'm, I'm the cameraman here. Also, in quotation marks, cameraman. Huge shout out to Dice Addictions in Tulsa, Oklahoma for letting us set all this up and doing an after-hour shoot for our introduction video. 
He's a huge fan of uh, Gunpla, and he's even got a website if you want to hit him up at uh, diceaddiction.com. Dice I don't know. Love you too, Aaron. I don't like this. Baby. Sh of course, we all love Rusty. Yeah. He just doesn't need to be told. Aaron has self confidence issues. Yeah, Aaron gets moody if we don't tell him how much we love him. What? Me? So, moody? make yeah. sure, guys, that you tell in the comments how much you love Aaron and Rusty. Yeah, I appreciate it. I got pretty low self-esteem. That's why I'm over here building mob kits at 1230 at night. <laughs> All right. So, now that, you know, we got out of my feelings and everything, which, you know, we're going to do every episode, guys. Because... Uh, we'll build this emotion and talk. Yep. Because now we're finally done setting up the field. Yes, because this is, this is a more normal-looking field than the monstrosity we had a second ago. You, you put the boxes on top. You wanted ledges. I wanted ledges. How else am I supposed to shoot you from far away? This is a good enough ledge. Leave me alone. Anyways, moving on. Okay, moving on. Um, so once, once, you're, uh, once everyone's ready and you have your field set up, uh, players will go in turn order, order placing their gunpla anywhere on the field as long as it is not within 8 inches of their opponent. Or opponents, if you're... Her playing more than one pun opponent. Okay. Eight inches, buddy. Okay, let's measure. Eight this. inches. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Eight inches is a lot shorter than I thought it would be. You should probably make it ten. Nah. Yeah, get within eight inches of me, please. Please. I'm going to go ahead and start down here behind you. I can rotate. It ain't gonna matter to me. True, posing is a free action. And so, well, at the beginning, beginning of each player's turn, they get two attack actions and two move actions, and they're allowed to make any number of free actions. And so, well, the actions, the actions that how we're talking about will be can be found kind of in the resources section. And so. Oh, they're right down here. Pass the weapons. And so, oh, here's your complete list of actions. We got your basic melee attacks, your basic range attacks. Okay, so, so we start the list off with the attack actions. Then, then we move on to the free to the move actions, which for now will only consists of a basic movement. Okay, and then we have our free actions, actions which are um, breaking away from grappling, and, uh, posing your gunpla, uh, activating systems, skills, or any other effects, uh, um, picking up or dropping weapons, and then you have your defense actions, actions which which are also free actions, as they. They are only allowed to be chosen once, once you've been targeted for an attack. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start this off. Uh, I'm assuming I get to go first. Yep. I won the roll off. So you so have two move actions and you have two attack actions. Uh, oh. uh, full move values uh, for each of them, right? Yep. Awesome. So I have a full move value of 20 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and move 18 of those inches. Get this set up right. So, right there. Move 18 of those inches. So probably about right here. You know, get a nice little look at that G and Barbie doll over there. And then I will take my my attack. Uh, what do I want to attack with? I think I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, an attack. All you have is your beam cannon and your rifle. I'm gonna hit you with my beam cannon is what I'm gonna do. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and make an attack with my beam cannon. The damage on my beam cannon is a 24 with a 27 inch blast range and a uh, two armor piercing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my attack roll. Well, uh, up, Aaron. So oh, how it goes now is that since you've chosen, chosen your basic attack, attack and your weapon and your target, target, now, how I declare here what defense action I'll be using, which is just going to be a basic defense. And, and so, oh, um, his basic range attack action is going to be he his 2d6 picks plus his um, accuracy. Okay. And so, 
So I got it. So whatever I roll off my 2d6 is gonna get added to my accuracy rating as of right now, and my accuracy rating is a plus three. I do believe yes, plus three, and then I have a plus one on my attack rolls with uh, being mass produced. So. Uh, so do I roll first? Yep. Awesome. Attacker will always roll first. All right. So let's get this roll going. Let's see what I get, guys. Aaron, just roll. Pull over here so the camera can see. Oh, uh, I thought the uh, camera can see all that. Actually, right there, or right here, or on your paper. On my paper. Yeah. Or on the box. Either or. And all right. So I got a nine. Plus, I'm gonna eight. add one off of the mass produced, putting it up to a ten, and then add my three from my base. Accuracy, putting me at a 13 for my attempt to hit. Okay. And so now that he's made hit his attack roll, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and roll. Pull my defense roll. Guys, guys, just the contrast better. Okay. Hey, and so oh, if a dice would fall off the surface like that, how you would pick up, up the die and re-roll it. And so with the defense roll. Uh -huh. Is a five plus my evasion stat of three p for an eight, and so since I did not not evade paid the attack, heck, I have have the damage damage of that have beam cannon dealt to me. Twenty four with two AP. Twenty four with two AP. Huh? Well, get chunked, buddy. And so now uh, we're on to our damage calculation, in which I will bring up a cup for you battlers first here real quick before I actually get into it. So, oh, there's a lot of different factors that we went over that affect the damage that how you take whenever you're hit. Okay. Well, we've developed uh, helped some formulas, uh, some simple math path problems to help you to figure out how much damage you'll really be taking. So right up here, two damage calculations. So first, you'll subtract back the damage of the weapon from. Uh, from, uh, from the weapon's AP. Hmm. So, Aaron, may I see you hit your sheet? Absolutely, friend. And so this is why we have gun plus sheets. Heat so that we can... This is also why you need scratch paper. Yes. So you can do quick maths. So you can so figure out if you're dead or not. 24 damage minus 2 AP is 22. And so... So oh, that two damage damage there that I just took away from the main main damage value, how is what's gonna go automatically through to my my HP. And so, oh, next up, I take that 22 I just got and subtract my high damage reduction of 15 from it. And so that comes out to seven. And then I'll go ahead and add. Add two to that seven for for the two AP for the so total it, damage of nine. So my beam cannon was able to make it in through his defenses for a total of nine, and now his uh, damage resist resistance upon taking a successful hit goes down by one. And so for your remaining HP, I would put subtract nine from seventy-two, which comes out to sixty-three. And then and I would subtract 1 from my DR, which brings it out, out to 14. And then I'd simply list hit, those two values next to, to the final values in pencil. So if you were a truly dedicated Gunpla tabletop battler, you would most likely have your uh, character sheets laminated and thus be able to use, uh, what is it, dry erase markers to be able to make this so much faster and cleaner. But seeing as how we have yet to be able to get a hold of a uh, chip's laminator, we're going to go ahead and just use it like this. So since I made my attack, I have also high mobility. So I'm allowed an additional move action each turn. Yep. On so top of... So you still have two left. And I still get another attack, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go and uh, apply my hyper or no my large beam rifle and it's at the same attack range uh, of my medium beam cannon which is 19 so I'm gonna go ahead and make my attack roll for that so like I said I get a three plus um, 
what is it, 3 plus 1, so I get an automatic 4, and then I just gotta add it with whatever I roll. Right. So, let's get cracking. I got an 8, so I got an 8 plus a 4, I got 12. Uh, let's see what you got, buddy. So I'll just be doing a normal defense again. I got an 8 plus my 3. I, 11. Yep, I got 11, and I got hit, and I got beat by 1, so... All right, so my, my beam rifle does 14 damage right off the bat uh, as the basic damage, and four of that damage is going to be armor piercing. So his he's going to eat four right off the bat. So 10 is going to go through, and that 10 is not going to make it through to his actual health, but is going to chunk hit, is going to take another point of his damage resistance off. And then I will have my... Uh, my use is reduced by one on my large beam rifle, so I have 14 uses before I need to reload. Uh, so I'm at 13 for that. And then... So uh, my shield, it doesn't actually state how many uses I have before my cooldown. So shields, shields don't have cooldown. Oh, they don't? Yeah. I could have just kept chunking you out with my result shield beam cannon. The beam cannon? Yeah. Oh, oh, the beam cannon, yeah, that ha has... Oh, wait, it has an 8 and a 1. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was looking at the ship. Yeah. My bad! Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and take my two additional movement phases and get super far away from this very angry Barbados. Uh, keep in mind, his... there's not much... There's not how much place to go, dude. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I can move all of 40 inches, so... Good point. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move all the way over here. Probably off screen, but I'm trying to hide from him. So, it is you or go, my good friend. Okay. And so, oh, the way Aaron did that, that movement was, was a little off, so he would have stopped, hopped at 20 inches, and then made a second movement action. But I just decided to shortcut it in essence of saving time, because I don't want this to be an hour long video and just decided to mash them both together since I was getting two uninterrupted movement phases anyway. Yep. And so, oh, since the beginning of my turn, turn I also did hit an attack, or er, two attack and two uh, move actions. And then, and I also get hit a, uh, oh no, that's only whenever I have those systems active. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, I'm going to go ahead and, Head and activate a Trans Am. So for three turns, I get triple my movement, and I get plus one move action each turn, plus ten to damage, plus six to all rolls, minus ten to my movement for three turns after Trans Am goes on cooldown. And so for the next three turns, I I have basically he unlocked safe mode off. That sounds busted. It is. All right, guys, this is where you're going to figure out what pilot so, uh, special system skills you want because this is where the game starts getting pretty busted. Okay, and so oh, I'll go ahead and make a basic movement and to, um, to show oh, a different way hey, of moving. So since we have, have these buildings here, I'm going to go, oh, go ahead and demonstrate a um, vertical movement. So oh, you take your measuring tape. You measure it from, from the base of your kit, and you measure it up to the ledge, hedge of the um, of the building you're trying to get on. And so, if it's within in your movement, you just go go right on up. And is that so, using your movement, though? Yes, it is. This is still using your movement, so this is still a movement phase. And so, oh, you're at seven, so you have. Er, you've moved seven, so you can still move the rest of your her movement. And, and your triple to twenty-four inches is so triple twenty-four 72 is seventy-two inches. Four. So you have sixty-eight I mean seven. inches. Never mind, you have sixty-five yep. movement left. And so you can move another eight inches. Is in the same movement action. So you cannot switch out of your movement action if you do. Who decide to move like this? 
this because this method of movement is to allow for for a um, not only vertical hold but also side to side movement as well. Oh, mainly so you can change your direction, go around corners, all that kind of thing. And then whenever you're moving down, you don't help measure down down to the ground. You just measure straight out because your gun is gonna fall anyway if there's nothing under it. And so I'll measure it over, let's say, 10 inches. Well, let's go with 5 and move down, down to this smaller color ledge here. And then I will go ahead and rotate tape my gun plug as a free action to pose it. And then I will I'll pose it again and to take aim aim at Aaron with my small sniper cannon or pistol cannon. Okay. And, and so the range on my pistol cannon, cannon which is the 200 millimeter gun that the Barbados uses, is a 28 range. And so to measure range, you'd simply measure from your gun plus as base. And so Aaron is about nine inches within range. How does your 200 millimeter cannon have better range than my beam rifle? Because as it shoots, because as it basically shoots a physical shot. Yes, but gravity. This is a test field. What well, gravity? <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Go ahead. I'm kidding, but um. So that's that's really the overpowering part part of combined weapons. But however, these things cost two carry each, where they would have cost one if I had just taken them as cannons. And so right. since Aaron is with so since Aaron is in, in 19 inches of my high mobile suit, he's within range. And so I will go ahead ahead and use here's a basic range attack. Heck. And so I have a five accuracy plus nine for a total of 14. To, and so Aaron's just got to beat Pete a 14. I have a 4 to start with, so I have to roll 10. Yep. Wait. So Aaron's got to roll pull an 11 or higher. Because to to avoid an attack, you have to have, your result has to be greater than your attackers. I'm going to go ahead and use my pilot skill reflexive. And so, uh, what, how reflexes work is that when Kenji's attacked, he can roll a d20. Uh, respect. And so, oh, what this d20 roll will determine is if, if I hit or miss. And so, oh, um, so if he rolls 15 to 20, my attack is going to automatically miss, and I don't even make take an attack roll. Well, if, if it fails, however, the attack, that hack goes off as normally. I got a 10. Okay, and so the attack would go off as normally. I rolled, oh, I ended up rolling a 14. So I roll. Yep. And so now Aaron has to get a 10 or, or an 11 or higher. I got an 11. Oh my god. So the attack doesn't hit. Woo! And so, so oh, Brazil too fast. And so I have two move actions and, and an attack action left. So, Chip, I'm winning. We're going to go back down here to the action. You <laughs> proud of it, Senpai? And we're going to get a little more complicated than you, and doing basic attacks. Oh, we're going to get more complicated? Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to do this first. Basically. Yes. Beam struggle, let's go. So we're going to go down, down here to the actions list again. And so, so that we can show off, off some of the other actions besides just basic attacks and basic defense. So, right under, under attack, or right under basic range attacks, we have run and gun. So, oh, the cost for that action is one move and one attack action. Action. How, how it works is that, that you make a basic move action ignoring other gunpla, and each time you change direction, you may make a basic hit, uh, ranged attack. And you may only attack each gunpla this way up to twice per turn. And each tar target may only make take a basic defense action against this action and cannot counterattack. So you're gonna run and gun me now as an example? Yep. Okay. So how run and gun will work is that I'll move first. So 
pose since I have my 72 movement from still you have having 65 training. left. Yep. But, no. But oh, you gotta do 72. Never new, mind. Yeah, new move action. So every move action, your movement is reset. But, so I'll go ahead and move over eight here. I'll go, and then I will, or, and then, and I'll make, take a basic range, range attack action, using my, my, um, my small pistol cannon, so, got a, yeah, I got a five plus, oh. and so there's another, other example, and so, oh, what we do in that case, you just pick up the dice, and you just re-roll it. So we got 10 plus 5 for a total of 15. And so Aaron's got how to roll a 11 or higher, or 12 or higher. No, an 11. 11? To be equal? Or to be more? To be more. I have to roll 12. So in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and use reflective. Use reflexive. reflexive. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and roll this D20 again. And if I get 15 or t uh, between 15 and 20, I just get to dodge it. That's a five. That is not a dodge. Okay. Well, so I'm probably going to be eating some damage here, buddies. That's a lot of nope. That's a lot of nope. All right. So he's going to connect. And How so much damage is that? And so it'll be 28. 28 damage. Wait. My what? Yep. How? How is that more than my beam cannon? Medium it's a 200 millimeter cannon, Rusty. P pistol cannon. No! Combined weapons. Got Alright guys, I'm going to have a chat with him off the stream, but uh, I'm feeling some prejudice right now. I don't care. You can't hate on the grunts. That's busted. We're going to have talks. There's going to be a version 4.1 coming out here pretty soon. Um, but okay, how much damage is that? So it'll be 27 minus your DR. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and have that hit my shield. Okay, so you're gonna. Will my shield the, die? You're gonna use the block action. So what's the DR? I can't on your use shield? the block action. That's how you use your shield. Oh, well, you said a running gun, I can't use anything but basic defense. Yeah, that's just rolling the 2d2. Oh, okay. So I want to, I want to let the shield take up the damage. Let, okay, so oh, we'll go ahead and revise our previous previous phases here, here to explain I didn't how know. you can use the shield. Aaron, you read this. Yes. this. No, you're the one who read it out loud earlier in the video. Shush. Yes. Teach me, senpai. So, oh, instead of choosing the basic defense, and we'll just say, hey, I was doing a basic range attack. Heck for this. Yes. Um. Aaron, Aaron would po post up his shield. And then, and he would, and then I would deal hell damage to the shield instead. So, so I got uh, 28 minus one hunter armor pierce, and we got uh, so we got 27 minus minus the dr of his large shield, which is nine. Ah oh, man, that's gonna kill my shield. Mm-hmm. Rip. And then, and so 27 one. minus nine, nine is gonna be 18. This game's busted. Mm -hmm. Well, for custom builds it is. Leave my straight built Rizal alone. And so, oh, that'll be 18 damage to who his um, or that'll be 19 damage because because of the one AP. Yep. Minus minus the shield's health HP of 13, for a leftover of three. And so, oh, Aaron would be knocked back zero inches. And take six, three and would, damage. And would take an extra three damage. So, Aaron, so Aaron, that damage does go through your DR. Okay, I know. So it's gonna no, like it doesn't go through your DR, like your oh, DR yeah, is applied to, to Okay, so. Yeah, your DR is still applied to that damage. So then I'm not going to take any HP damage, I'm just going to take DR damage? Yup. Okay, so then. Faster way to get rid of DR. 13. Okay. Yeah, done. Because that's two attacks. Yep. And I lost my shield. Oh, um, and so, 
Oh, since it was running gun, or since it was really running gun, hun, after after the attack, I would have kept moving, and if I had changed direction again, I could have hit Aaron again. And so, and as you noticed, I just took the shield off because it was completely destroyed by a 200 millimeter cannon. Hey, a single beam rifle, a rifle shot from a GM's handgun took that thing out. I don't want to hear it. Go. Finish your turn. And then, so we, just, we just discussed you. this. That was the end of my turn. Okay, cool. My turn. I'm gonna wreck his stuff, guys. Uh, so, let's just completely ignore everything on my kit besides my beam saber and my rifle. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and gonna move, well it's 20, so I need a tape measure. Yep. I'm gonna move into how far away are we from each other? 13 inches. I only need to be within 8. Boom. Hold up, Aaron. Check that again. It's within 8. See? Okay. Tips are touching. Yep. Boom. So I'm going to go ahead and make a melee attack. Boom. And with my hyper beam saber, with a range of eight inches, damage eleven and five AP. And also, also um, melee weapons t get critical hits on a roll on a natural roll of six or higher. So wait, I have to roll a six. Yeah, if you roll a six or higher, you get a critical hit. Oh, cool. And that's before adding modifiers. So damn six. it, you, you you nailed the six. All right, so that's six plus. Uh, melee, so eight. So, eight, eight, six, per, or nine, with plus one on my attack. Or nine? Roll. Well, the thing or is, wait, you is that already modified so, into there. So, hold on. Um, so, um, you're not going to take it, take any of that into account now, because you got a critical hit. Okay, cool. So, so the critical, it. so critical hits are automatic hits. You don't even, hit, you probably shouldn't even do a defense roll unless you have an effect, heck, that, that'll, um, that'll go off from the enemy from said defense roll. And so, oh, um, melee weapons, when they pay land critical hits, they, they ignore for your opponent's damage reduction, given, given that because you're in such close range using a basic, basic melee attack, that, that you should have, have a clearer shot uh, of any vital points on the mobile suit if you're that yes. close range. Slay, Rizel, slay! And so, oh, instead of... You're going to take so, 11. Yeah, I'm going to take pick 11 straight damage. And so... And then I'm going to punch you. I'm gonna and so, before that here. damage, Aaron's going to roll, oh, 1d6. Why? Aaron, here's another one. I got it. I'm going to roll 1d6 for what? To determine critical effects. Oh, snap. Critical effects, guys. I didn't even know about this. And so, oh, when you make a critical hit, before you deal damage... You roll 1d6 to determine, determine the effect. And so, oh, if the result is a 1, um, the target can't make move actions during their next turn. If it's 2, um, you destroy toy target weapon that they own. Um, if it's 3, it deals double damage to all hit targets. I really if, hope it's the 3. For 4, it's destroy one piece of equipment that Pat the target owns. Never mind, I want a 4. 5 is target cannot make attack actions during their Never next mind, turn. Never mind, I want a 5. 6 is triple damage. I want, I, want, I want a six. Come on, Rizel, give me a six. I got a six. Okay, he's he, he's just mopping the floor with me here, folks. Woo! So custom builds versus straight builds, guys. It's all about the dice rolls. So thirty-three. Hit! I just choked him out for half his health. In one hit, I still got another one. So I was at sixty-three, or no, I was at fifty-nine. That was over half of his health. So I was at 59 and 13. I'm not going to lose any DR because he ignored it. Yep, critical hit. With the critical hit of the critical hit. So minus 33. You're at 26. Yeah, that's. I'm at 26. Woo! And so with a critical hit, he literally just flipped the table of the game. Yeah, so much for losing my shield, right, guys? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make another beam saber attack. Uh, let's see if... I can get above a six again. Oh no. 
Oh, I got snake eyes. Oh no. Oh well, there's no there's no minus penalties for getting a snake eyes. We're, so I we're not gonna got either. four. So then I'm pretty sure that gets through your does not get through your dr, or it does not even get to so, your defense rolls, right? Uh, you done hit, hit four? Yeah. yeah. Might have my evasion's a three, so you, you get it anyway, huh? You get it anyway. Oh wait, yeah, two plus your what? Two plus two, that's four. Yeah, so you st that's still one more, so oh, I still gotta do a defense roll to make sure. But you're gonna get it anyway. I hate you. Alright guys, so I didn't get it. I still chunked him out though. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my two, two movements and let's go. So from right here, that's 31, let's go to 11 for my first movement. Boom. And then, so I got another 20 to go. And so while 1v1 hunt battles like this will usually end up up devolving into move, who attack move, once, once you start adding more players to your pod, whether it's battle royal, oil, or team battle modes, it'll, it'll start hard to kick up an excitement. Or you could just be like me and roll critical hit on a critical hit. That's Here it. Here go, buddy. Oh yeah, that's right. I still get a turn. Yep, you're not dead yet. Okay, so I will go ahead and pose my Barbados. How um, do I make a counterattack? So, oh, for counterattacks, whenever after damage calculation, you're allowed to have to choose one of your her weapons to make counterattack with. And so how the counterattack works is you would make a basic basic attack action of of either melee, melee or ranged against your her attacker, and then and they would make a basic defense action. And so, um, if your her opponent targeted you who for the chain action, that had allowed that if you successfully hit them with melee actions, you are allowed how to take another to try and hit them again up to three times. Times so. Oh, say if you successfully did get all three hits, between every single one of those hits and after the last one, your her opponent would have the opportunity to make a counterattack against you. And so now that I have have my Barbados post wielding his nice big pig G and diver sword, I will go ahead and instead of run and gun this time, I'll go ahead and choose hit and run. And so hit and run is the melee equivalent of run and gun. Uh, you make a basic move action, ignoring other gunpla, uh, and any gunpla that you moved through during your movement, and you may make take a basic melee attack against, and they hey, and they are only allowed to choose to make take a basic defense action against this action. So I can't counterattack. No, counterattacking is free. You can. That's just part of the. Turn. All right, cool. And so bring it. Using run and gun, this is also my final turn. Turn with Trans Am active, so next turn, turn He's gonna I'm gonna lose a lot of movement. I'm gonna lose a lot of movement. Yeah, I'm gonna chop him up. I really hope he gets bad dice rolls next turn. It's not gonna happen, buddy. So I got two turns. Ten of the seventy-two. Cool. Mm -hmm. And not right on down to here, gonna Okay, so 10 to 12, so 12, onto that, right, so 22 of the 72, I'm down to 50. Then I'm going to move another 16. Total of 22 top of 22 is 16, that's 38. Then, then I've only moved up to 38, 38 plus 15. What are you even doing? Hit and run. Oh. And so, oh, once the move action's finished, then you make your melee attack. Because as you, because really how hit and run works, you ran in or flew by them and smacked them with your sword real quick. 
So, we're, we're, and that's why it's also hustle only allowed to be a basic attack action whenever you roll for it. So, we're going to go 2d6 plus my melee. Oh, that's a 6, so I crit. So, we'll go ahead and roll for crit effect before damage is dealt. Crit effect 1. I will go ahead and destroy his beam rifle. I thought one wasn't destroy stuff. Oh, wait, one, one isn't destroy stuff. My bad. But one is he cannot move next turn. No. He cannot move next turn, and he is dealt 10 damage from my diver sword. That ignores his AP because it is a melee weapon that obtained a critical hit. Okay. Okay. And so, oh, oh, that was the last of my actions besides the well, final, final useless move action. So I will go ahead and end my turn. Okay, it's my turn. Um, I can't do anything. I can't move. Exactly. It's your turn. Okay, and so back to my turn since he couldn't move. And I, I was luckily behind behind the wall, so he could not have directly attack me without moving, moving either up to here, here, or around, around the corner of the building, or around the far corner of the building. But now your movement's kind of drastically. Yeah, so starting this turn, because last turn, Kern was the last turn that Trans Am was active, um, my Barbados now has minus 10 move for the next three turns. And you don't get that damage buff. And I do not get hit the damage buff anymore. Or the attack roll buff. Or the attack roll buff, which I also forgot to use. But we're mainly just trying to teach you guys. <laughs> so. On to my basic... So what's your movement now? My movement is currently 14 inches. Hmm. Hmm. And I can move next turn, huh? Yep. I can move three times. Not unless I, not unless I nail you with another, other critical hit of one. Yeah. So four of that fourteen, I'll move up, up here, and then another five for a total of nine. Then I will pose. at the Rizal's head. Bring it. I'm going to get my counterattack anyway. And so, oh, now I'll use who's a basic ranged attack pack to attack Aaron with my high, um, my nice little pistol cannon there. So for 2d6, Really, that's how you're gonna throw your dice. Yeah, no, that that was a that was a bad you dice. Drop them. Yeah. I didn't want to knock over the Barbados. I should have just switched hands. I it was the same thing. I know. At least you it was least a better dice them. roll yeah. this time. You did some sketch. So yeah, do do good dice rolls. Don't just drop them like I just did. And in instances where you can't readily access dice, you can always download a dice rolling app. We'll have many any link to our site. In the coming so weeks. So you got a 10 plus whatever your accuracy is. So I got 10 plus 5 for a total of 15. My evasion is 4. Roll an 11. Damn, I just did that on camera. 4. 4. I got an 8. Ah, so you're going to hit me for what? 2 plus. So it's going to be. 28 damage, minus your armor pierce. 15. Okay, so 15 damage. I just don't understand how that thing deals so much damage, Rusty. Because it explodes when it hits you. But it's still dumb. In essence, that wouldn't even deal that much damage then. Piercing would deal more damage. Think about it. Okay, and my DR took another hit, so down to 12. It explodes right next to I'm you. I'm going to take a counterattack. 
Okay. So I'm going to get to make my attack, and it's going to be a ranged attack. So I got a three, four. I got a four plus whatever I roll. Um, that's a lot. Hey, Russ. I got 15. Oh, wait. Okay. So, 15. Where's those two dice? Yeah. So, 11 plus, darn it, 14. Ripperonis. Yep, It's going to be 14. Uh, 14 damage with how much AP? 4. So, 4 and 4. How do I burst it? Do I declare that before? Oh. Uh, not bursting it. It is, um... Bursting it, it is normally going to be automatic. Okay. Medic, so, what's your burst value for your beam rifle? Two? Two with a three next to it. So, the three is added to the, um... To the AP? Yeah, to the AP. So, it does six AP? Yep, so, it goes from... Ah, oh, jeez, that's going to hurt. So, oh, getting six AP, so, already going to kind of be down to 20. Yep, and then you're going to take... Then I'm going to take 8 damage hemorrhage that goes through my DR. That's going to get sucked up, and my DR is going to go ho ho down to 12. Yep. That's just for the counterattack. Okay. Here we go. What's your health at? 20. Man. I could just shoot myself in the face right now. You could. Not give you the satisfaction of winning. I know. Unfortunately, All right, hero Yui. Unfortunately, that's not the how a real action we can do in this game. You can commit some poker. I mean, they're suicidal, but yeah. I didn't. I, I forgot to give it to Barbados. I should have gave it to Barbados instead Let's of go. taking sharpshooter. Roll your last pathetic roll, you need. Okay. So I have one more attack and one more move action. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead, head and move, move in for a yeah. minute. Come on, it. bring it. Because I'm going to hit you back twice. Hey, Chip, I'm going to win. So that will be a move of 10 inches. I'm going to go ahead and get nice, all nice and personal up in here. Aaron's going to use a free action to pose because you can't do that on your opponent's turns. So, posing. <laughs> and so next, Hexta will activate, hit a basic, basic melee attack. Okay, so we roll for 9 plus 2 is an 11. Oh, and since it was higher than a 6, it's a, um, it's a critical hit since it's a melee weapon. 6 is a dumb number for a crit. Yeah, it was. You get I'm 6. Over half the time. No, not over half. Yeah. Dude. Because it's two six sided dice, with six being the highest number. Six is the middle number. Good point. point. However, that's 50% of the time you're getting a critical hit. That's with melee weapons only, though. I'm just saying, it should have been like an eight. Melee weapons deal hell a considerable amount less damage than, than, than range. So, roll. No, that was a bad roll. A three. It's a three. What's Please. a three? So a three for the critical hit head effect is double damage to all hit targets. Cool. So twenty damage. Cool. My DR soaks up twelve of that. Critical hit, man. Oh. Just twenty straight damage. Never mind. Awesome. My turn. Okay. Yeah. Oh, counterattack. Oh, yeah. If you want to counterattack before yeah, I'm gonna counterattack. I got a six. Should have put reflexive on this thing. Suck it. <laughs> oh, wait, were you counterattacking with a melee? Yeah. Oh, okay. where's my sword? Okay. Yeah, good point. Point, so. Oh, yeah, go ahead and roll the effect. Six. Triple You're damage. dead. Yeah, I'm dead. He, yeah, Aaron just won. Off goes the barber's head! The grunt suit has won. Has proven itself once again. Your Gumpla Battle Champion. Boom! Look at that. Just put it on. Put it. Put it on. 
Put on the edge of my rifle. Put it on the edge of my rifle. Just like in the anime. It was on the edge of her sword. Oh, well, you know what? Rifle. I won. Suck it, Barbados. This is just something I did on the fly. You don't actually do this with your opponent's gunplay. Yes, you do. You gotta disrespect them. Aaron. Show them who's boss. Just like I showed Barbados who's boss. Well, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed and played this demo video. Alright, guys. This is Aaron and Rusty logging off. I'm gonna go get food. We're probably gonna be back here next week for another exciting episode and maybe we can even get Chip in with one of his gunpla that he's built. That he keeps trying to get out of the video for, but I keep almost getting him in. Yep. So, like I said, signing off. We'll get see you guys next week. Like and subscribe Dice Addiction. <laughs> and thanks for sharing the evening with us.